In my last video, I mentioned that I was dialing back, I was doing my mid-season dial back so I wouldn't burn out. A second community, this is Steve Grusis the Cycling Greek. The week started off with Monday, which I took off to get some good rest. On Tuesday, it was 65 miles of wind-filled solid endurance with my teammate. Actually, I was with my teammate for about 20 miles and the rest of the time I was solo. Especially on the way back, hitting those 10 to 15 mile an hour headwinds for 15 miles. This clip that you're watching now is from Wednesday's ride with the Drew Crew. It is short and it is fast. Before I met up with the Drew Crew, I did about two hours of endurance, and that endurance was more easy to moderate. It was my version of an old guy warm up. The reason I'm including this high intensity work is because I'm an old guy, and if I just stopped doing high intensity work for, uh, for a month, that would set me way back, and my second half of the season would be ruined. You'll notice that I'm not doing any type of structured work with high intensity. I'm just following whatever the group is doing. I'm picking the group because I know I'm going to be working very hard and there's a good chance I'm going to get dropped by these guys. But I'm going to work it and I'm going to get that high intensity work in. So speaking of that, let's go to the action on the screen. We are now at full race pace. We are racing to the 135 degree right turn that's going to lead into what we call the Willow Climb. Because of the turn, you're starting at a very slow speed that goes for half a mile. After you crest, you have almost four kilometers of flats with a little bump toward the end before you get to what we call the initial finish point. To the action on the screen, we whittled down to about five of the strongest people in our group and now we're looking at the strongest three go up the road. I am uh, I'm trying to hang on. I'm thinking that these guys are hopefully going to slow up, but my watch has gone below 300 and now I'm just looking for a wheel to hang on and that guy is it, but you know, I'm not even able to hang on to him. So the good thing is that I found my uh, failure point. I will now see how things improve in the coming weeks. I've now jumped forward to just past the middle of that climb that I was describing earlier. And the person I'm coming up on is the person whose wheel that I couldn't hang on to. And then after I connect with him, we will connect with that person that you see before him. He actually made a valiant effort a little while back that you didn't see on the camera to try and jump up to those three ahead. That took a lot out of him. And as we pass him by, you can see him looking behind him in the back to see if there's any board coming up. And then uh, we just continue on and then he just dials it back a bit. My chase partner and I trade some good pulls and we make it into the first stop. After a quick regroup and an even quicker recounting of recent lusty bike adventure stories, we're off. Part of my job in joining this ride for the first time is to understand the flow of the ride. Where are the sprint points? Where does the fast stuff start? I now have an OPA point appearing on my left, right there. I almost get hit and I yell, Opa! This seems like it would be the start of the fast section, but I don't see a lot of people going, but I figure, okay, I'm going to start going now. It helps when I see someone attempting to bridge up to that group that's up ahead. That gives me impetus to do the same thing. I catch up to the others who weren't riding that hard and I pass the old sprint point, but still not a lot of action. So. I'm just, again, riding around and seeing what's what. Jumping ahead a bit, one of the riders has taken a good pull and I got on his wheel as someone has got onto mine and you can see the group way back there, so there's a huge gap. I only see that gap now as I'm putting the video together because during the ride, I'm not looking back. So at a certain point I figure, okay, he looks like he's tiring a bit, so then I'll go ahead and take over. While the winds were there that day, they were certainly not as bad as they were the day before or the day to come. My pull goes all the way to the left turn where the ascent starts and it gets a little steeper as we get toward the finish. And uh, that same guy took over at the front and that same guy that was in back of us is still in back of us. And the group, it's still back there. Jumping forward to the first steeper section, that guy's still putting on the pressure and I'm doing over, I was doing over 600 watts and now I'm starting to die off a bit. The guy that was in back of me is dying off a bit. It's hard to see what the pack is doing, but I do see them back there because I know there's some very strong people in the pack back there. So now I'm trying to get back on his wheel. He's dialed back just a bit. I'm still, I'm still able to do over 300 watts and I make a connection. This old guy, me, has put out a lot of bananas out there and uh, it's 200 meters to go and then that's it. I gave him a thumbs up, I actually said good job and then I pulled off and one of the guys, uh, the strongest guy from the pack back there, is making a run and he's going to, looks like he's going to take him at the end. It's hard to say and looks like he is, yes, because the finish line is, is near the bridge. I'm definitely including this right into my mid-season break. 
Thursday, it was back to more endurance. In fact, this was mid to upper endurance. There was a lot of wind on this course. This day's ride was about 60 miles, 20 to get out to the course in which I had a really nice tailwind, 20 with my teammates here, and then 20, which was with a hellish headwind. These three days drained me. They were good training, but they drained me. So on Friday, I took the day off, and then it was Saturday. I couldn't find anybody to ride with me. So I decided to do my regular four lane workout, basically just going up the course and I figure I would just keep a steady pace. Soon after I started, another rider came up behind me and recognized me. Probably from YouTube or maybe from racing together. He's in the 50 plus and I'm in the 60 plus, 65 plus. He was here visiting his sister because the Madeira stage race was supposed to be happening this weekend. In fact, on this particular day, but it was canceled about five days ago. So he decided to make it a really long training day. He was doing something like 110, maybe 120 miles, uh, 13,000 feet of climbing I'm estimating going up to Kaiser Pass and back. We did a good pace on the nine mile section of the insulating climbs leading to the bottom of the four lane and then once on the eight mile four lane we just kept it strong and steady. My average wattage for that climb was 242 watts which is the top portion of my uh, of my tempo zone. Uh, my, uh, my threshold zone starts around 248. I was pretty pleased with that wattage. I think that was the first time in a long time I've been able to hold that steady for that length of time. If you've been watching my previous videos, you know that I do a lot of my work on the four lane, but they're with uh, smaller intervals. And now that the two races I have coming up in the second half of the year that I want to focus on, each have about three to three and a half mile climbs. So I gotta be stronger longer. Once we got to the top of the four lane, we parted ways. I wanted to go with another five miles with him to shave her, but I just didn't have the legs for that. And he was just going strong, strong, strong. I turned right, went down the fire station wall so I could do some sprints coming back up. I actually didn't feel like doing sprints, but I needed to do another set of upper intensity work. So what I did were 30 ons, 30 offs, all the way up. And I was able to get eight of those in. So there you have it. This is my training plan for my mid-season endurance break. One dose of threshold climbing work, two small doses of upper intensity, and a lot of focus endurance. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. Remember, you gotta have that good plan and you gotta execute it. Consistency is the key. Comment, like, subscribe, and remember, subscribe. I'm almost to a thousand subs. The Cycling Greek.